Hello. How are you? So I'm good, thank you. You? I'm okay. I'm okay. How is uh Bemoye? Yes, Bemoye. It's yes. doing well. We're currently in our um like training season, as it were. Okay. Um, the summer holidays. Okay. Teachers are off for kind mm-hmm. of. So we use that as an opportunity. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I saw this on your LinkedIn profile. Yes, you yes. with a little boy. Is that your son? Boy. No. Like <laughs> I'm trying to think of a little a little boy that I have a picture. Was it was that you or someone else? No, 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 no. Oh my yes, no, that's my WhatsApp. It. My WhatsApp. Yes, WhatsApp. Yes. Yeah, that's my that's my friend's son. That's my friend's son. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Fantastic. Mm. So what's what what have you been doing since we last talked? Yeah, well, I think a lot has happened actually, um, since we last spoke in terms mm. of Um, I I don't know if I mentioned the last time that we um have like essentially we're putting together organizations which i'm sure i mentioned that bit but yes. the number of organizations based on the students that they work with has okay. uh, surpassed the ten thousand mark so it's really exciting to have like essentially access to um that number of children in terms of influencing their um, okay. leaders, leaders yeah. also influencing them which is very exciting so um that's one major thing um of course i mentioned it's training season okay. so we are currently um putting together quite a robust um uh, series of like training programs and things like that for teachers okay. and going through planning going through the concept like the conceptualization of learning um today's session was really interesting it was about um basically contextualization of the learning process and realizing that um like a lot of the learning happens from a like a western perspective in terms of if we give them an example of something it tends to be a western thing and they can't really relate to that and so we wonder why sometimes the student doesn't get something when a lot of the time learning tends to be contextualized like that's Mm. why i know what you're talking about yeah i saw my mom do that or whatever it is yeah like i don't have a clue i don't know what you're talking about (laughs) when i was when i was young see all the examples used to teach me we're local oh fantastic i mean so uh, i'm I'm wondering if we have uh somehow uh made a mistake of using examples out of the environment Mm. you know yeah Mm. that's true concepts uh maybe universal okay but the examples you need to give at in every in, in every region must be local. Right, exactly. Exactly. You know? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. the same concept, but you you give examples with something that the student can easily identify. Exactly. You That's know? what makes it stick, right? Um, and actually your question was brought up. One of the other educators asked that. They said, What is what's happened? Why is it that like when I was much younger, it seemed like we used local examples. What's yeah. what essentially changed? And the trainer essentially theorized, and he was like, by um, as as like globalization has happened, we've very mm. much taken on um like the western perspective in the in the sense that we've seen them as like the goal and so by doing yeah. that for for, for, for me for me i i say that was that's lazy okay yeah it's, it's la- not it's lazy ideal. i mean it's it's much better to use a local example uh maybe it's just because they don't want to rewrite the they have to rewrite it exactly it takes a lot of work exactly yeah, the the the, the textbooks does yeah okay yeah see see i hear a lot about uh changing africa's educational system okay well uh what i would say is this uh by now we should not be having textbooks the sa- exactly the same textbooks from the West mm. brought into Africa and be used exactly that way. As is, yeah. They, 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 they should be an Kenya edition, Nigeria edition, right. or West West Africa edition, East Africa edition. So Absolutely. that the examples in the book should be tailored to the region. 
Exactly. You know, so yeah, it's uh, see, I say that's just laziness. Okay. <laughs> and it's not anything about the West or whatever. It's about us not being prepared to do what it takes to do anyway. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, that's what he was essentially saying. He wasn't actually blaming the West. I think yeah. the idea was that um, the reality is we've seen the West as a goal. And so by deep mm. everything they did, we just copied and pasted rather than, yeah. no, actually, yeah. how do we make this our own? So, yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, so uh, my, my, my audience, well, I guess my audience need to remember who I've been talking to for the last five minutes. So <laughs> yeah. please, please. Uh, Corey Day, please introduce yourself again. No problem. My name is Corey Day, um, and I'm the founder of the Vimoye Foundation. It's an organization that is reaching out to other educational organizations because our goal is to build Africa's future workforce. Um, and we're doing that by um, linking up with other educational organizations yeah. because we believe education is the conduit in which we can raise the next generation effectively. Correct, correct. So, uh, Corey, the, la the last time uh, we, 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 we spoke on this podcast, uh, no, after, I, was it during the post podcast or our conversation after the podcast? Anyway, sometimes you, you indicated to me that you are a Christian. You are from yes. Christian. <laughs> okay. So I, w I want us to start from that area because you see in the last few years i've seen uh, people in where we are london uh young people in particular not only denying religion mm. okay but saying negative things about religion mm. now now truth 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 be told uh i did that too okay i did that too uh when i was young <laughs> but i also did a lot of study i was i was into religion into christianity okay uh i i did I stopped being a Christian at the age of uh, about 25, okay? But before then, I was into it, full law, okay? So I, today, I admire the, the values, okay? I learned in Christianity. And when I say I've seen a lot of young people, including my daughters, okay? Mm -hmm. And one thing I keep telling them, if before you say you don't like something or it's not for you, you need to know what that thing is. And I've noticed that uh, they don't know what that thing is. They don't know what Christianity is, mm. okay? Uh, they just hear it's something old and in our era, we don't do old things. <laughs> okay? So, see, I want you to tell my audience how your Christian background has shaped your worldview. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think um, when I look at uh, my faith and how it affects how I see the world, um, I, first of all, see everything from a, a biblical perspective. I see things from the eyes of um, the founder of my faith, as it were. Okay. Right? So, Jesus. Do, yes, exactly. That great guy. Jesus. <laughs> exactly. So I see everything from that first perspective. And, and the first message is love. Right. And okay. so um, I all my first um, the first way I look at the world is from the eyes of love first. I, ha I have to introduce a version of love um, like everywhere I go, really. Um, but my understanding of love is through action. And so okay. 
a lot of people see love as a, as a feeling and mm. that isn't what my faith teaches absolutely okay you know interesting love is an action it says from god so loved the world that he gave so um the first and foremost thing for me is I see the, the world from a perspective of I, I should love my brethren, my neighbor, the person next to me. That also means people that don't agree with me. It also means I'm open to conversations because that, and that's, that's, that's why you love me. That's right? good. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter whether we agree or disagree. And, and that is what I think as a generation, perhaps we're losing. If someone doesn't agree with you, we struggle to get along with them. If someone yeah. doesn't see things the way you see it. And that's not, I don't think love, you know, um, love is despite those things, we find a way to, to, um, to, to, to get, get along, but then that love leads me to action. And for me, that action has found itself in the, in the version of, of Bimwe, first and foremost, mm-hmm. because I see, I see a need and I, and I want to reach it. Um, I think the second part of that is, is that it has shaped my why, you know, a lot of people are always looking for purpose, looking for something. Yep the latch onto right uh, because as humans it's just such an an, an innate desire to, ha- to have something greater than ourselves exactly and, yeah and so faith it gives me that you know and so when I look at um, my why I see it from the perspective of of Christ from uh, from the perspective of God because if I do things based on human beings I am, will be consistently consistently disappointed like <laughs> I'm sure of it. and so if my desire is to please man to please um humans to get human approval uh, we've seen we've seen it happen again and again they love you and then they pull you down they like yeah. oh, that's what the world does and so if you think like that it makes you afraid to try and step out and do anything but when you realize that your why has nothing to do with the world yeah then you're, you're more fearless as it were because you're not doing it for human mm. approval um, and that has really helped me because one of the biggest problems I had when starting the year was I'm I'm a diasporan. Like, what do I have to give? Nobody wants to hear from me. The continent doesn't want to hear the diasporan speak. But all they think is that <laughs> we have things so good here. And so why would we, how dare we come and say something about Africa? Um, and it really stops me until I changed my perspective. I was like, no, I'm seeing this from, from a space of faith and okay. it has nothing to do with with a particular human being it has to do with what I believe I'm sent to do so wow. um, that's my perspective or how I see the world based on faith <laughs> and I will tell you uh I like that okay uh even though I would never force my daughters mm. uh to be religious uh I still want to at least understand what that is right okay uh and like you said many people in this era don't have anything to to hang on to there's nothing well i wouldn't say that i correct let me correct myself they have left god and they are grasping to something else right okay and for me for me uh, it's exactly what is going on with young people climate change uh the all these social issues they are grasping onto now am i saying those those things are not important no but the way they are they are holding on to like it's death, life and death. Mm-hmm. Okay? And it doesn't allow them actually to step back and listen to other people. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. It's as if once you don't, once you have a different view, no matter how small the difference is, you become instant enemy and exactly hate yeah. the chat straight away like, but it's hate. crazy <laughs> you know it's crazy mm-hmm. you know so i appreciate your faith and uh yeah it's the same faith is still uh is still the the fulcrum of what i do you know even though i'm not a believer like you all right. Can I ask how that changed? You said at 25. Can I what? ask the, the you said at 25 you left 
um, Christianity? Is there something particularly that happened or knowledge that you No, no, with? no. Uh, okay. I, I got into religion. Okay, let me, let me say this. <laughs> uh, in my family, uh, my father is a open-minded person. Okay, he studied history, he loves uh, philosophy, and those are the things I was raised on. Okay, we sit down at the table or the, 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 the couch in the, in the sitting room, mm -hmm. and all I, I have always done is to debate one issue or the other. Okay, him, my uncles, all the time. Yeah, and yeah, so we've talked about everything. And when I was a teenager, uh, my father started doing this. He invites religious people to the house every weekend. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Oh, every weekend, at least three hours, maybe Saturday or Sunday. Different people, okay? They come and they sit down with him, they eat, and they talk bible and they debate something you know all the time all the time now i wasn't i wasn't invited to sit down with them but the sitting room just outside my bedroom so i hear all the all the, all the oh, stories wow. okay. mm -hmm. so uh when i was uh 14 my best friend who was who lived upstairs my building and then she was in a, in a boarding school. She came home and she, she told me, oh, I'm born again. Wait, what does that mean? Okay, I'll, see, I said, okay, I'll look at it. And then I started going to fellowship in school. And then, well, because of my background of always asking questions from childhood, I started asking the pastors mm -hmm. questions. Now, unlike many people, anything they teach me is uh, at the fellowship. I go back home, open my Bible, read it, and then I have more questions to ask tomorrow. <laughs> okay? So that's what I did. Right. Ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And then, I, see, I went to several churches in Lagos just asking questions. Wow. Okay. I I, I got I, I got into a particular de denomination and then I ran with it from 14 to 25. See, my, my first two years in the university, age of uh, 16, 17, all I did, I go to the library at least twice a week, but I never go to the library to read any school book. Hmm. I go directly into the refer reference library. All I read is encyclopedia. Wow. I read, I read a lot about Christian history, uh, Christian history, all that. Interesting wow. stuff. Interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. You know? So, uh, well, for me, after doing all that, uh, I still ask myself the question. Mm. If God is that great to have created this universe, this wonderful universe with so many billions and billions and hundreds of billions of galaxies, okay? And our own Milky Way galaxy has two, 300 billion stars, okay? And a star is a small star, okay? So our, our solar system is a minuscule place in it's a, 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 a small neighborhood in a galaxy. And our galaxy is, a, is in, a, in a small neighborhood in the uh, ob observable universe. So we are so small. So my, my question is, why would that God who created all this will sit down somewhere and be documenting everything that Millie me do. 
<laughs> it doesn't make any sense. That's so interesting. That's okay? an interesting it, it doesn't make any sense. That's very interesting. So that's it for me. Interesting. So, so see, I see people with religious beliefs. I, I like, I love them. I talk to them. Okay. But they would see people invite me to the church. I go. Oh, I mean, if there's a lecture, it is there's a particular preacher mm -hmm. that you want me to listen to. I listen. No. I yeah. listen to T.D. Jakes. I love uh, Dr. Uh, Monroe. I listen to him all the time. Yeah. Okay, he's dead, but I listen to him. So yeah. I listen to these guys. I also listen to there's a there's a Pakistani uh, cleric, a Muslim cleric. I listen to him. Mm. So I do all that. And I listen to a lot of, see, for the last five years, I've been, okay, I, do, I started doing my meditation three years, no, four years ago, okay? I, I work with Sadhguru. Yeah, I have, I have at least uh, six of his books on my, in my library. Okay, I walk, I, I do meditation with him every single day. Uh, now, is he a religious person? No, he's not religious at all. Okay, so that's what I do every day. And I enjoy it. You know, so that's me. <laughs> very interesting. Oh, wow, that's very interesting. Yeah. That, it, yeah. Well, I really hope that you get an answer to that oh, question see, one day. See, I'm, 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 I'm good when it comes to the answers. Now, that mean, that mean, it doesn't, it doesn't mean I have all the answers, but mm -hmm. I'm good because what spirituality does is encourage you to explore, and that's what I like to do: mm -hmm. explore, ask questions, look for the answer. So mm -hmm. I, I love that. And I will continue to do, doing that until that day I don't have a breath. Mm. So, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, like I said earlier, uh, people, a lot of people talk about uh, our educational system. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you are in that, in that space. Right. Okay to enable that system work better okay right. and but the first question is this we say the educational education system is not working why not and then what is actually wrong with it yeah <clears throat> i think honestly i the reason we're having problems with the African education system is because it doesn't actually exist. There is no <laughs> as the African education system. I wish there was, but it, it doesn't exist. There's no Nigerian education system. There's no Ugandan education system. No one has sat down to create a system. As far as I know, uh, please, if, if other people know otherwise, uh, please, I'd love to hear from you. But as far as I know, it is a remnant. What we have is a remnant of the colonial version of education patched up by the Americanization of Africa. That's it. Like that, those are the I, agree with, I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, in the early 80s, about uh, 80, uh, my dad was supposed to do, well, he was invited by uh, uh, R.S. Peters. Uh, he was, he was, he's, he's not, he's not, he's not dead. Uh, he used to teach in University of London to do his PhD with him mm. because my dad, in in one of his uh, in, in his masters, he wrote his dissertation about one of the theories that uh, R.S. Peters was uh, was proposing in ed education. So mm. he saw he saw his writing and then. He invited him to work with him. Unfortunately, my father, for whatever reason, declined. Uh, and till tomorrow, every time I bring I bring that up with him, 
You see, that's one thing. That's one of the things he he regrets. <laughs> wow. Because yeah, because uh, R.S. Peters did some interesting work with education. You know, you can you can see some mm. of his videos on online. You know, so yes, uh, unfortunately, we we never evolved what we got from our Corona masters. Mm -hmm. Just like what we did with every other institution we, we got. We never sat down to say, okay, this is what they gave, gave us. Mm -hmm. But now we're in charge. How should we adapt it to our current circumstance? Right. And to enable us to continue continually improve it uh we never did that exactly that's why uh civil service is dead and we know when it comes to governance it's actually the civil servants that that do the work right because exactly. they are always there exactly. no matter what what which politicians gain power they come and go the civil service is that yeah you know and uh yeah so the uh education system doesn't exist mm -hmm. so if if we both agree on that <laughs> uh, the second thing he said the american uh, americanization of our yeah. education system yeah. and that that's i, I think that uh that's another, another angle that is scary, okay? Based on what I've, what I've learned recently about that system, um, about the American system, uh, and I look back, okay, after my time, uh, I've seen a lot more of the, of the implementations, mm -hmm. which... American cities have in their schools. Mm -hmm. And I say to myself, that's exactly why we are here, where we are. Because that the inner city schools are failing badly and our schools, our government schools are failing just as bad or even worse than them. Mm -hmm. Because they are somehow they are built on the same philosophy, ideology, or whatever, you know? So, see, the, the question now is this. How, what can we do to change things? Mm. Because it's, it's very important to change things. If we agree that education is the most important thing when it comes to our uh, development. Right. Yeah, I mean that that question is uh it's a layered it's, it's a layered <laughs> one because um how we go about fixing the African education system or really creating an African education system. Everything that we're seeing now we have um, charities um, like internationally that come in and try and patch things up with their um, read and write systems and all of that kind of stuff um, but no one but I think the reality is is that the, it is a governor <laughs> it's a government problem it is a, and I, I hate that because I'm, I'm always um, a like I like to push the idea that as the people we have a lot of like power in terms of you know what we're creating in our society and and that to some extent is true but in terms of mass change in terms of getting something done quickly and effectively it it starts with the government like they, they need to create or, or give the space for something like that to be created um because at the end of the day the what 90% of, of students in, in Nigeria or, or many other parts of, of Africa uh, can't afford the higher end schools. So if we're trying to make any big changes quickly, it is the, it is the government schools. In, the, in Nigeria specifically, it's not even that easy to, to go to the government and say, hey, I'd like to help 
uh, one of your schools. It's, I, I have no idea why there's so much um, secrecy. Perhaps the secrecy is, is because of shame, because they know that the system or the situation is so dire that they don't want you to now go and get a camera and start showing everybody what's happening um, in terms of the state of the education system. But mm. the, the reality is, I think uh, African leaders need to hold their hands up and say, listen, we're, we haven't done anything. We would like to do something. We need help. And in, rather than this patchwork system of let's just add to this, let's just do that. It needs to start. It's, it's a rehaul. It's a starting of, again. We, we, we clear away what we have and we create something that actually is for Africans, by Africans, but created so that Africans can actually play on a global stage. Because at the end of the day, we don't want to become um we, like just within ourselves we, we we want to be part of the rest of the world yeah. um and so our education system should reflect that but there are unique issues there are unique problems um or factors within africa that have to be accounted for when we're creating a system that currently isn't being accounted for um yeah. For example, um, like the, the the lack of funds by like the what ninety percent of the people, or and I can't remember the stat, but the number of people living below the poverty line is such yeah. that even if we give them free education, there are ten thousand other things in their way. So how how do we make sure that that young child that has had now has access to education? is feeding at home to make sure that they're able to think when they come to school or mm. all the other things that the government just isn't taking into account. We've just said free education and hopes for the best. Well, um, so for, for, for me, uh, I mean, hey, uh, I'm not one to advocate for government to take over everything, okay? <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not at all. But, but, uh, I believe, I believe that in our in our countries we should mandate 12 at least I, I told you the last time 12 mm. years of schooling mm. okay it's it's it should be compulsory okay and and to help the poorest of the poor at least breakfast Lunch should be free to all the students. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, there's another issue. Uh, if breakfast and lunch is provided by the government, uh, there is a lot of wiggle room for a lot of shenanigans yeah. to yeah. happen that in, those, in that space again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but, hey. Compulsory 12 years of schooling and breakfast, lunch. At least. If we can start I mean, there. With, with breakfast and lunch, even those whose parents can give them dinner. Right. They would be okay. They, okay. Would, they, they would, would be, be okay. To yeah. Okay. All they need to do eat Gary for dinner. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, um. Gary for dinner. And all the, they will suffer that for the next 12, 12 years. Of, I mean, hey, let's assume that, that their parents are so desperate, they can't do it. Yeah, they will suffer that for the next 12 years. At least they will be healthy. Okay? And by the time they come out of 12 years, 12 years of at least standard, good, reasonable standard of education, Mm -hmm. they can do something right they can work okay see uh i used to i used to advocate oh everybody goes to no i don't i don't see now in, in fact i i started i started changing my mind uh nearly 15 years ago okay mm. that, no we see my for me i see a lot of people who go to university when i was in nigeria and they come out, and they, 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 once my first job in banking was HR, okay, for the first two years, okay, I was in HR recruitment and training, okay. So a lot of people come to me that look that that are looking for jobs, okay, and I ask them the question, what job are you looking for? And I hear anything. See, this is what I did I, one time. 
to, but I try to tell the young lady, no, don't tell me anything. Mm -hmm. Tell me what kind of job are you looking for? Right. When she continue continually insisting anything, you know what I did? I look for a broom on the corner, <laughs> you know you give it to her, sweep. She started looking at, I said, you said anything. Right. Okay, so the point is this. We have a lot of people who go to university. They spend five, four or five years of university and they come out and they're looking for anything. Mm. Okay, that tells me the educational, uh, university education didn't add value to that person. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that makes me actually think of something because I think um, when we look at the education system in, in the UK or in, in the West, it's, I'm sure at one point it was to solve problems, but today that's not the focus. The focus is, yep. is to fit people into the system or, or whatever or what have you. But in in Africa, our focus has to be to solve problems. It, like, yeah. If, like you we, said, we have too many now, problems. We have too so many we, problems. So we, we need people to learn how to exactly, solve this problem exactly exactly and i think that then that should be the primary focus of an african education system is one built on how do we, we have a series of problems how is your path of education going to solve this that essentially is if you come out like you said of, of the education system saying i'm looking for anything then that we failed like that yeah. we failed on that mission which is to create problem solvers and if we're not doing that i frankly don't know what the education system in africa should be doing other than that um there's just too much to solve to 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 bring another um person that just is educated for the sake of educated um yes. or ha has knowledge for the sake of knowledge is now we don't have time or space See, for that, after you after you learn you you gain skills which you can put in, in use immediately okay you can start buying books like me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Buy any book and read them. See, that's that's why I I I advocate that 12 years of, of schooling. So that at least you have the the ability to pick up a book to continually educate yourself further if you want to. Right. Okay. So so nobody will tell you what to do mm -hmm. if there's something you want to learn pick up a book learn it that's it okay if if you want to study law medicine some fantastic engineering okay uh basic basic science yes you need to go to university for that mm -hmm. for those mm -hmm. okay but there's so many things you don't need to go to the university. So many. So many things. Okay. Mm -hmm. You've learned the basic, basic mathematics, English, and history. See, I advocate maths, English, history, philosophy, ethics. Those are things that, for me, uh, somebody who comes out of a, of a secondary school must have a grasp of, of, of those things. Then you can add on to other things, okay? But those things, it, it will help us build at least a generation of young people who understand some basic things about society, okay? And then they can add on from that some there are different flavors of what they want to be you know so i don't know uh we are here sitting down talking about it but uh the people who should be talking about it should be the guys in the ministry of education unfortunately uh i can't i won't be surprised if you go to Nigerian's Ministry of Education tomorrow, and by by twelve, and you can you can you can only find uh, one fifth of the workers. Oh, 
So goodness, if you don't laugh, you cry. Um, yeah, the the current state of yeah the education system is yeah is, is dire in the sense that I actually don't. I haven't again heard any real talks of, of of change or improvement, and that's even more scary as far as I'm concerned. The fact that a, a conversation isn't being had uh, about the, the what is glaringly obvious is, is really sad because education is a long game, right? Yeah. So yeah. if we're not talking about it now, I'm looking at twenty years from now. Where are we? You, that is, okay. it's not it's not the moment that I'm, the issue is is that if you're not talking about it now. I can kind of see the future. So, um, yeah, some something needs to be done very quickly. And it doesn't take long to change these things if we have systems in place. Within a generation, things can change, but we need well, to... Well, uh, the one thing that, that is happening, in at least in Lagos, okay, uh, at least I know about Lagos, uh, those, those schools that were built by uh, missionary, missionaries I've been given back to the missions, okay? Mm -hmm. So they're they're like private schools in Mm -hmm. terms of the administration is not government, but the the church or mosque or whatever that built it, that built those Mm -hmm. those schools. My my school, for example, is back to the Anglican uh, mission. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we old students are very much involved in putting things together. You know, mm. uh, yeah. So it's in- it's interesting. At least we have a few schools, a few schools, which uh, we can we may have. Uh, may produce better better uh students in the in, in the future right. you know but but a country like nigeria with uh, maybe 100 over over 130 million people young young people we need we need schools that are run by the government mm. So, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I do wonder, though, hearing you speak, whether another angle could be through the exams board. If we change the exam itself, what people are aiming for, schools by default will be forced to change what they are. Um, well, te- I mean, they, 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 else. the exam boards in Nigeria are still run by the same uh, Ministry of Education. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted the con if we because it, I just okay. it the seems ex- easy exam to exam board of a test exam board sorry exam board at least secondary school is a is a West Africa board. yeah the white one yeah yes yes it, it's a West African board okay so I I don't know I don't know much about that you know but mm. see I I I will I will say this even though I haven't seen the kind of uh, exam papers uh, they have been putting out for the last f- few years. Uh, 20 years ago, they still had interesting... I mean, see, l- let's say this. I see young Nigerians who go to school in Nigeria, mm. okay, they come out sharp people. They they know a lot of things. Now, all those people I, I'm talking about, their parents can afford to put them in private schools. Mm. Okay, so 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 the 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 issues we we are addressing today is not for those that can go to private schools right we're talking about the regular person Mm -hmm. okay whose parents cannot afford private schools Mm. who who need the schools give uh, built and administered by government right so i don't know that's 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 crazy i don't Mm. know what you guys can do you know, you guys are in 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 the in the, in the 
education. educational system. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm more interested in after after secondary school, you want to go for that. After university, you want to go for that. Yeah. You know, but uh, me, I'm not a, a teacher like that. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, I hear you. I think like that our focus obviously even at Vimoye is specifically um this area, this, if I'm honest, is this space, but we're but we're doing it from outside and it's just a lot harder. It's a lot harder to make change from the outside, yeah. um, outside of the of the government, outside of, of the decision makers um at the end of the day. And so yeah, I'm I'm right in the thick of, of these of these conversations and well, you get you get there. Okay, so I, I'm trying to encourage you to thank you <laughs> follow your way in by little, you know, but uh, make sure you keep your your standard. Mm? This is Don't bro bro in and you join them. Make sure, make yeah. sure, you know. Yeah. yeah uh, very recently, maybe a month ago, or just a little bit uh, longer than that, the American uh, Supreme Court uh, struck down the affirmative action policy, you know, that uh, American universities have uh, used to, for, for the uh, admission process. Mm. See, for me, for me, uh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Okay, uh, I like that. I don't know what I don't know your view, but I like that. Yeah. Um, when it comes to America and the issues they have around race, I don't think it's nearly as simple as the rest of the world. <laughs> Because um, again, it requires a lot of research. I don't. I wouldn't say I have all of the um, answers or the knowledge, but based on what my understanding is, is a lot of um, American policies are actually. There's many of them that were in that the way they were created was to keep um, black people out of, let's say, even the mortgage system. Or there's so many systems that were purposely created to keep black people out. So if that were true, I can understand why America had to make certain changes in order to to bring things back to some kind of um, e equilibrium or some kind of, um, to make up as it were for, for their history or their past. But when it comes to the concept of affirmative action in, in general, when it comes to America, I think it's, it's honestly, the, the, what we're seeing is reactionary. We've just seen recently the, uh, um, the overturning of Roe versus Wade. We've just seen um, so many areas that they're just overturning what is I think reactionary to like the, the far left, um, agenda that has risen up very recently, and so in order to combat that, we, we see we see the complete opposite happening, as it were. Mm. And this isn't new; it happened um, like decades ago when the far right were rising, and so this all of this affirmative action was created. It's all reactionary, and um, again, if it all goes one too far left again, or they too far right, and they'll come back. <laughs> so, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to America, it's a back and forth. It will be a back and forth um, until, I don't know, the entire collapse of the system. Uh, because uh, ultimately, my opinion is that we're, all we're seeing is a decline of an empire. We only have these conversations when we see the end of, of, of an empire's reign. Mm. So really, I think that's really what the issue is here, is that um, they there just really isn't much more to do. So in, in their society, they've done everything they need to do. They've done everything they could do. And so now what, what's left but for the fall of the empire? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> like that, that's it. Yeah, well, th that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. And maybe, maybe so, maybe so. Uh, but see, why am I interested in that, in that uh, American system? Like you mentioned, we we in Nigeria, for example, okay, even though uh, the America never colonized any part of Africa, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the rest of the world, okay, Europe, Africa, Asia, all of us have swallowed a lot, a lot from Absolutely. America. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, 
all all the all the the shows I watch as a, as a young child are at least eighty percent American. At least eighty percent of um American. Okay, from Sesame Street, yeah. you know, all the cash cartoons, everything, mm -hmm. you know. So. Uh, when it comes to affirmative action, uh, we we have a, a affirmative action in Nigeria, uh, and for me, it has it has decimated Nigeria. Uh, when I mean going to government secondary schools mm. the the supposed the supposed to be the best government schools okay which you have to pass an exam to go to uh you see the cut of mark the i mean they use cut of marks past it okay and unfortunately in nigeria uh, your state is a state of your ancestors. Yeah. Not where you were born. Exactly. Not where you have been living. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. So a state who in, in the minds of the people who are supposed to know is supposed to be a it's a, a good educational st state, okay? Maybe out of uh, 400, the cut of mark of children from that state may be 280, right? Now, if I'm a child whose parents come from that state but live in a state far, far away, Mm -hmm. I have never, I've never visited the state I'm supposed to have come from. Mm -hmm. All I've done is to live in the other state, go to school in that state, do everything in that state. But I will, ju I will be judged by the cut of mark of the state. I, I have very little. I'm not, I'm not uh, as associated to that state. Mm. You know, in any way. Right. Okay. The level of, of education I got is the same that every other child in that, in that other state gets. Yet, right. my cut of mark, 280, whereas the supposed to be, the supposed indigent of that state who sits next to me in mm. class, 20. 20 or 50 were asked 280 for me. Okay. Mm. Now my 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 issue is not about justice in injustice. That's not it. Uh, like I told you last time, uh, there's no equality in life. Okay. I, 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 it doesn't exist in, in nature. But the point is this. So Someone will go to that school, okay, with the score of 50, and will be will, will learn with somebody who scored maybe 200 mm -hmm. or 300, and they will be taught in the same class with the same so, uh, material, and they will be expected to cope with the standard of teaching, it's not possible. Mm. It's not possible. And what pays me is that we create so much mediocrity in a, in a society. 
with affirmative action of any kind, we create additional, additional and unnecessary inequality. That's what I see. We African countries always talk about uh, colonialism. That's why we're not coming. We're not doing well. Blah, blah blah. I say no. See, Singapore was colonized just like any of the countries in Africa. But what they did is to turn everything around by making everything. Oh, meritocracy. Met exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> see, see, that's what Singapore did. Mm. Merit. Merit. Okay. Affirmative, affirmative action encourages some regions not to do, or some people not to do the best they can do. Because they know, no matter how poorly I do, eh, I'm from my state, so I'll get the, I'll, I'll get the, I'll get the opportunity. Okay, so for me, uh, that's that's why I I was happy because see, uh, I don't know if I told you about uh, my. Uh, my adventure, knowing Dr. Saul, no, Thomas Saul. No, oh, okay, okay. So I would, I will tell you some other time. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Saul uh, has been talking about this for at least forty years. Okay, more than that. When he was uh, in uh, Cornell, okay, he was given the assignment to recruit more black people, okay? And he was in charge of that and he was doing it. And then he, he discovered that, no, if we give these people in uh, opportunity, which they didn't merit, okay? So, okay, let me correct myself. He said, there are a lot of young people, black people, who went to not the best secondary school, but they did well, okay? And they did so well that they can go to university. But then if schools like Harvard, MIT, Cornell, the standard of teaching is different because it, as a student, it's, it's expected by the school that you are fast thinking and, you know, fast pro processing person, okay? And the way they, that's the way they teach, okay? They expect you to do so much extra work, all that. Now, these young people who didn't go to, um, most of the people who go to these schools, this uh, Ivy League school, have always learned that way. They go to the best schools and they teach them that way, okay? So to put them together with young black people from the inner, inner, inner cities, where they didn't teach them in, this, in, in a uh, fast pace, mm. okay? They cannot cope, okay? And he said many of them enter and they drop out, okay? That if they were allowed to go to schools that fit their standards, okay? They cannot learn those things at their own pace and they will graduate more. But by forcing them to come to an Ivy League school, one year, two years, they, fl they flunk out. Mm. I have been saying that for a long, long time. And that's, that's what still happens today. Mm. A lot of black students coming to, coming to the schools on affirmative action 
and they flunk out. So it's not even the interest of the students. I, I mean, I, we're not saying that every black person goes, who goes to have a, a MIT will flunk out. No, but too many of them do. So he and I would prefer to go to schools that fit that, that level of study where they can learn and graduate and come out and enter the workforce. Yeah, I, I absolutely see what you mean. I think that the concept of, based on how you described it, affirmative action in that particular scenario absolutely like makes sense in the sense that um, I've, I've seen it happen in the UK. Like I work within the education system, even in the UK, and like they're looking at how they do that for like medical students, and people are freaking out because we can't have a different level of medical student. It's dangerous. Exactly. So I appreciate the 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 reality of that situation, and but I think then the onus is on the the government or the the system itself to to then look at actions that we take from a younger state it isn't at university level that we try and, and say it's time for you to now by force let these people into the system because like you just said they will they will struggle but it, i i think the concept of affirmative action is it, it's just i think this is a, a lazy version of it forcing us a, a high-end university to take people in what a, a, a serious government should really be looking at is how do we bring up more people that are at the level that they should be so that they can like you exactly. said rightfully get there yeah. i think that's what effective um action should look like <laughs> yeah and um but that requires that requires work that requires them to put invest more money at a younger stage okay younger and, and and that's what willing to what do. the people in charge don't want to do they don't yeah, want to do exactly. the, the the work at the foundational level that's to it. make sure they give more opportunity to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's when it comes to let's go back to Nigeria. That's where we need to focus on to make sure people, no matter what uh, uh, the poverty level or of, of their family, they can go to school year one to year 12 with feeding breakfast dinner uh breakfast lunch to make sure at least they learn something you know so yes, see pe sure. people don't want to go back to the drawing board to the foundation mm -hmm. okay all all we're doing is putting plaster on the wound mm -hmm. yeah. rather than break everything down start it start from from, from scratch yeah you know so yeah yeah, I mean that's the, that's the reality of of the education system. I would say in much of the West, even the the current education system. I can speak more for uh, the UK. Um, COVID showed us that there's much work to be done. The, mm. the way that uh, the the system tried to figure out what your grade would be just based on <laughs> yeah the history of knowledge and that they've had from other areas or the same area and trying trying to just create some kind of patchwork up, um. Uh, option yeah. just show the the reality of the uk education system that it hasn't moved with the time we're not creating we're not building young people up for the future and the uk will eventually have a similar problem if we don't start you know making changes um, yeah 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 so it is it's a warning for many countries many systems out there that if if you do not change if we do not create a system that actually is building young people up for a, a future that we still don't know what it looks like then societies will crumble we'll see them crumble yeah 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 it will it will okay now i i wanted to talk to you about uh this book uh see the maxification of education mm. See, I, I really want you to get this book and read yeah, it. Yeah, I've read it. I have not. Yeah, yeah. I really, really want you to, to do that, okay? Because of the work you are doing, okay? Mm. And I want your work to progress. And uh, because, see, 
you might think or anybody might think just uh, scaremongering, but it's not because some of the things he talked about in this book, I have seen. Okay, I have seen people who go to school, they graduate and can't do simple maths. They can't express themselves in any articulate manner. But when it comes to fights, you know, go activism. to the streets, <laughs> activi activi activism, they're good at it. And that's what he's, he's talking about, that mm. what they're doing is to teach students to be activists. I know, in, interestingly, used uh, when they started this program, okay, in the is it in the early eighties, Nigeria was was used. Yeah. So, so I really wanted to read it. I, I don't want to. I don't want to talk talk too much about it because uh, even though I have read it, I can't explain all the things. I, 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 if, if somebody has read his, the book, it would be easier for me to, to comment and then mm. discuss the, the issues, but it's, it's, it's great book to read. Okay. Wow. Now, uh, let's talk about something very much in the same, in, in the same realm. Okay. People who want us to change the words we use not to say certain words mm -hmm. they are always triggered <laughs> you have the lingo down yeah you know <laughs> yeah. see my my daughter my first daughter when i talk to her if i say certain, certain things she want to correct my language mm -hmm. My own daughter I had to tell her that's not that's never going to happen. It's my language. <laughs> See, so I'm telling you, I've seen it close. You know, yeah. so it's not as if somebody is telling me, and I'm just I'm I'm wondering what the person is saying. No, I'm seeing it. In my own daughter. So that right. means this is what this this is style they teach them. Yeah. They're not they're not resilient. Right. 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 Okay. You see all these things. I mean, in the in the university, for students to want to counsel a teacher or a guest lecturer because to them he's going to say something they object to. Universities are supposed to be place, are supposed to be the place where the most objective, objectable things should be said. Right. And you will have the opportunity to speak against it. But no, all they want is don't even say it. Mm. What do you think? I mean, yeah. this, this, these are the things that, say, for me, we take a lot of things from the West. Okay? So all these things are, are things I don't want to, to take to, the, to Africa. Okay? Because for me, we are behind. Mm. We need to be able to talk about any and everything. Okay. Yeah. To catch up. Yeah. To catch up, right. we need to right. be able to talk about any and everything. Mm. So 
I don't want to I don't want to take something and say, oh, this person must not come to our school because he mm -hmm. says something we object to. No, mm -hmm. I want to hear everything. I had everything in my in my days. So I want the current students to be able to hear everything. Mm. Yeah, there's so much there. There is so much there. I think, yeah, the the generation that the education system seems to currently be raising, at, definitely in the West, is is one that um, seems to lack resilience. I don't know if it's the youth, though, as in the youth of uh, the youthfulness and the age that they're in right now, and perhaps that will change over time. Because I I vaguely remember a time where many of these things. Um, I could identify with. I could definitely say that I went through a phase myself in that. But life happens. I think we never thought we'd get there. We uh, and I think every generation mm. has had this moment where we think the last generation had no idea what they were talking about. Then we okay. get there ourselves and we say, oh, you know what? They had. They might have had some kind of points. We start seeing what our parents were saying and saying, you know what? They weren't. They weren't always. <laughs> you, you know. Then I think so. A part of me, there is an element of me that thinks that. It might not have to do with the new generation, but the phase of life. That, mm. That's my first, mm. perhaps, theory. The second theory I have is around the, the unfortunate reality that the, 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 the current generation grew up on social media. And so we're seeing life imitate art. Like that that was meant to be online. This whole online space wasn't supposed to be real. But we've taken that online space and we've brought it into real life. And so yeah. what, what we're seeing is that on social media, you're fed your own thoughts over and over yeah, again. Yeah, exactly. The chamber. And so what we're seeing is people want that in real life. We don't want to interact with people who have other thoughts than we do because on social media, we don't have to do that. Yeah. And so, like you just said, we have um, students going to university and only wanting to entrench themselves in the, in the thought that they already had. That, exactly. That's not education. That's not learning. Um, it's that, and I, I think that has come from social media, unfortunately. How, how we go about tackling that is, this is a completely other um, conversation. But those are the two areas I would say that I have led to what we're seeing now, um, where many people are shocked that their thoughts are everybody else's thoughts because they were told by social media over and over again, but a bunch of people think the way you think maybe there should I, I i've seen other people start talking about this there needs to be something around how um social media how the internet feeds information to to us as in general not just yeah people, mm -hmm. that something needs to be done about that because if we refuse to engage with other thoughts we will create extremists on, yeah. on every on every space every every, every space yeah, yeah every single space and that's a, that's a scary world. That's a yeah. very, very I mean, scary world. You see my library. I read books authored by the right, the left, yeah. the middle. Now, I will tell you, I have a big bro, okay? Somebody dear to me who helped raise me, okay? In fact, I started really reading personal development from him okay i have a book i, I stole from his office <laughs> maybe 10, 30 years ago okay today he lives in canada canada and when i shared some things to him he came back to tell me just a few weeks ago to tell me, yeah, he has seen my my progressive going towards the right. I just laughed. I just mm -hmm. started laughing. <laughs> okay, that's one. Mm -hmm. Also, a, a recent acquaintance, I would say, okay, because we're not friends really, but we talk, okay? When I started sharing th some things with him, he just came out and called me far left, mm -hmm. far right. I mean, even what I shared with him was not content written by somebody right. Mm -hmm. Was content written by people who are left. Mm -hmm. And then whenever he, he shares something with, with me, I make a comment. 
But when I sent something which he doesn't like, he doesn't make a comment. I just laugh. <laughs> so I ask, I, I deliberately ask him, what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. You know what he did? He went to a mutual friend to ask a friend to tell him, to tell me to not to stop sending him those things. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm just surprised that it's happening even okay. at, at uh, listen, every... Listen, listen, every this, per this person is a director level person in a charity. Mm. A, a senior director in a big charity. Mm -hmm. An international charity. That scares me. A person of his status unable to read. I mean, when I first got this book, the, the war on the left. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I sent him a picture. Okay. Just because it was written by Douglas Murray, he called me a far leftist, a far right. I tell him, no, I read anything. So the, my point is this. When people in position, a high position, where you expect them to be maybe not neutral, but be able to absorb information from all sides. Right. They're so triggered by information that doesn't align with their thinking that they ask you not to send them anything. I mean, yeah. that scares me. That tells me that person of his position, position if he deals with someone who doesn't agree with, with him, what would he do? Mm. Mm. Either he will cut that person off, not give him work. I mean, it's, it clearly says to me he won't be objective dealing with those kind of people. Mm. Yeah. So these things we see with youths it's not, it's not only with with the youth. Yeah, yeah. It's everywhere in our society. Mm. And social media, uh, I can I can I can point a finger at social media. The way the alg algorithm works, okay. Most of us have been in our bubbles, okay. Either right or left, and uh, we we. We have lost the the ability to adapt whenever anything we don't like anything we don't like to us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's why I tell people read the book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because hey, because I read I, I mean the my social media does that. Okay. But luckily on my on my YouTube, I have so many different people. So when I noticed that YouTube has, has been sending me, sending me a particular yeah, thing, yeah, I, uh -huh. I go back, I go to my, to my, my, my uh, subscription I, and deliberately click on one of those other, uh, other channels. Yeah, so that, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that there's, there's something in that. I think we've allowed, um, the internet and social media to dictate how we use it yeah. rather than as now we need to create uh learning for we're, we're using education right create systems that young people are being taught how they navigate social media how yeah. do we make sure so, I, I, see mm -hmm. um, unfortunately unfortunately i think uh the government needs to force social media because if they don't so social media wants us to stay on that platform and the best way to make us stay on each on their own platform is to continue continuously feed us what we we're, ha we're happy with yeah okay otherwise we will we, we, we leave now that means government needs to force them 
to change how the algorithms work. Otherwise, we will, we will enable them to break society. You know, uh, I, I like uh, freedom. Uh, I, I like, I, I want the government to step, step, step away. But in this, in this instant, uh, it's, it's for the security of the society. Yeah. Yeah. I, I... Yeah, and when we look at the concept of freedom, absolutely, freedom is, is is very important. But there are certain forms of one person's freedom that encroaches on another person. Yeah. And so that's where the government comes in, where we find how we straddle that line where your freedom doesn't encroach on someone else's freedom, yeah. vice versa. And currently now, it's becoming very difficult for somebody who has an alternate view to what is being pushed on social media. Yeah. To speak up. And now their freedom, as far as I'm concerned, their freedom is being... Um, encroached upon to some extent so yeah we have to find another way to 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 live harmoniously um because there are other there are other thoughts out there that in fact many people agree with but are too afraid to speak out on for fear of being cancelled exactly exactly whatever it is many people are, are um you you hear it even around even my own friendship groups they'll have to say i have a very unpopular they have to start with that i have a very unpopular opinion because yeah. now if they just come out and say it you'd be shocked but because they're afraid of, of people's reaction yeah. to, to anything other than and then the mainstream at least right yeah. now so so we um, we are we are censoring ourselves yeah okay to avoid triggering someone yeah you know right exactly what we don't need so just because we are afraid of being cancelled we we censor ourselves mm. Mm. so see it might look ridiculous but if we can if we can speak our minds in essence, we can't think. Mm. And it also means we can't change our minds. And what I want people to understand about the idea of silencing a, a, a person that doesn't have doesn't agree with you is the fear of them, if they have a fear of not being able to speak out. If let's say you have a point, right? Um, as in like the, the thing that someone else has to say isn't what you agree with. By not allowing that person to voice it, you actually silence, you actually miss the opportunity of them perhaps learning something new and you learning something. There yeah. could be a middle ground, there could be a different thought process that you can shed light on, on their thoughts. But if you refuse to allow them to speak, that conversation never happens. That change. Exactly. That exactly. exactly. And so if, if you want to essentially get more harmony and more understanding, actually more uncomfortable conversations need to happen yeah. for us to get there. And yeah. I think people see it that way. Maybe, maybe we'll get closer to that, but that, so, that isn't what is being pushed right now. Yeah. So uh, again, my, the, this issue, these issues are breaking society in the West. And uh, my fear from for Africa is that uh, because of our inherent tribalism, mm, okay, that's true. Yes, mm. uh, if we allow this to fester in our society, the cracks the cracks will be so wide. Uh, and mm. the sparks will, 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 will fly in to allow us to build the Africa we, we want. Mm. You know, if you can, if you can sit down, argue, sh shake the floor, and at the end of the day, say, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Mm. You know. Uh, we will not be able to create that Africa we want because to 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 build a, a a great society, you guys need to talk, disagree, exactly. debate. Exactly, especially if somebody is on the 
lines of pan-Africanism. There is no way the concept of pan-Africanism can even have wings in any kind of way if this isn't accepted. This okay. idea that exactly. we come together and we, we have conversations which could lead to compromise, which could lead to a changing of, of minds. That, yeah. That has to happen if we yeah. come together. As well, the concept of one Africa isn't isn't because we have become a monolith. We no longer. It doesn't mean that we're now all this. this we, that's not. We we never we will never be exactly. But but so, it, to build up Africa, that one Af Africa, then we need to be able to talk about those exactly. things that divide us. Exactly. exactly. We need to be able to talk about them and say, okay, I understand that. Okay, mm. but I agree to shape this and take your your position in that yeah mm -hmm. you know so yeah so these are the, these are the issues uh uh you guys in education so you guys need to start yeah. uh sharing these things with the with the uh, admit, uh, administrators and with the students right you know? yeah you know yeah yeah there is there is a lot there there's a lot there you know what uh see i don't want us to overshoot the time uh we we have uh gone beyond what i pl what i planned to you know but the 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 top the discussion has been interesting uh Absolutely. what i what i what i I will beg for is uh, to have uh, another one sometime. Yes, always. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go again. <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 interesting. Uh, I like I like this kind of discussions, you know, uh, because uh, we we have to dig into those things. That's we, it. We we just need to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And Dorie, yeah, it's important. Corey, sorry, uh, I don't see see. Dory, haven't seen her in, <laughs> in the last time I saw her. Dory uh, Benson, the last time I saw her was uh, 1994. Wow. No, 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 no. I saw her at about 2000, yes. So, so somebody, I keep, I keep calling you her name I have the last time I saw her was in over 20, 20 years ago. That is very, I've never heard of that name before. It's a very, it sounds very, uh, it's a beautiful name. Yeah. Doroye, did you say? Yeah, Doroye, yes. That name before. Doro, Doroye, yeah. Yeah, wow. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it, she, was, she was my friend in, in, in university, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a really lovely name. <laughs> yeah. So t thank you very much for being here today. Thank yeah? you for having me. All right. Thank you. Talk talk to you soon soon yes. soon you all right soon. bye, bye.